I'd like to begin with what we might call an uncomfortable verse from the words of the Lord Jesus himself in Luke chapter 9 and verse 23 when he said, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And you know when you take up a cross, you have no further plans. And that's the point. We have no further plans for this world. We have no further plans for ourselves. We're following the Lord Jesus. And you notice he says to do it daily. It's not something we do once. We are constantly being bombarded with invitations to give ourselves to other things and other passions and other pursuits. But the Lord Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, you need to deny yourself. Now, it's not denying yourself of anything in particular. It's denying yourself, yourself as the self-pleaser, as the objective, as the end, and replacing that with Christ as your objective, as your end, as your goal, and seeking to only follow him. I've been reading a very uncomfortable book this week. It's called Too Hard for God by Charles Marsh. I read it many years ago and then pulled it up recently and began to read it and how humbling it was. Charles Marsh and his wife Pearl served the Lord in uh, North Africa, in the land of Algeria from uh, October of 1925 right through the Second World War, through the Algerian War of Independence, and finally left the field in 1969. He mastered four languages while there, and they plowed up that difficult land, sowing the seed of the Word of God. It's a fascinating book, very difficult, very convicting to read. I just want to read a couple of paragraphs to you. A testimony from a young woman her name was Nuwara. She had been converted, and when she returned home and told her family, her father began to beat her and to use cruel words against her and so on. But uh, she wrote to this uh, brother Marsh and said to him, I pray daily for the Christians of Algeria. Dear uncle, you know I am deeply grieved to see people all around me dying without forgiveness and without being ready to die. I long to see the Church of Jesus Christ established here in Algeria. Then all Algerians could perhaps hear the gospel and find the way of salvation. This is my daily prayer. She goes on to talking about carrying her testament with her and recently having the privilege of leading two girls to the Lord. Again, she writes, I'm so glad to tell you that my parents are no longer persecuting me as they did. I believe this is a miracle wrought by the Lord. Latterly, I've read my Bible a lot and am dazzled and fascinated by the power and the richness of the promises. Each morning, I feel that I simply must thank the great giver of all good whom I adore. The more I read the Bible, the more I discover that Christ is too good for us. For we do not deserve all this. He suffered for us. Did Muhammad do this? No. That's what I tell all my friends who think that I'm ridiculous. I want to tell you something which may make you laugh. I should like so much to die for Christ in order to say thank you to him. Dear Christian, what do we know about this? I think of the testimony that came from a Muslim to Brother Marsh when he said, after listening to the gospel message for the first time, what wonderful words he said. Are there many others besides yourselves who know this? Indeed, there are. There are millions in the world who have believed in Jesus Christ and through him have found peace and joy 
and forgiveness. But surely no one else in this land knows it. Oh, yes, they do. Then, if they really believe it, why has no one ever been to tell us? No, you Christians do not really believe your message. If you did really believe, you would have come to us before. I tell you, it's been deeply convicting to read this book. But as I read it, I remember the two great commands when the Lord said, Pray ye, the Lord of the harvest, that he will thrust laborers into the harvest field. And go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. May we pray for those who are laboring in these difficult lands and perhaps ask the Lord if he wants us to reach into some of these fields. I think of a little poem that he included in the book which says, I wanted to sow in a fertile field that bordered a pleasant land where fellowship sweet their joys would yield and comforts be mine to command. He gave me instead a barren spot in a land that was wild and drear where peril and hardship must be my lot afar from all I held dear. But I learned that the field of his choice was fair far better than any beside, for the master also labored there, my strength, my companion and guide.